Welcome to Boston's Beat. I'm Steve Locke, and in today's show, we'll see a local band perform live at the Raskeller, meet and observe Boston's premier VJ, and see a new instrumental video to the B-52's Work That Skirt. But let's start with some national rock news. Sting, frontman for the police, recently did three live concerts in New York City to test the material for his new album. It's reported to have a jazzy feel, and Sting wanted audience feedback on the material for his forthcoming album, due out soon. Speaking of solo albums, Mick Jagger's first solo album has just hit the stores and it's amazing. It's called She's the Boss. It features some of the best studio musicians in the industry and producer Bill Laswell at the Dials. The Stones are reportedly in France now, working on material for a new Stones album, and there's rumors of a tour this summer. A band on the rise, Los Lobos. Hailing out of East LA with their bluesy Tex-Mex sound, they are scorching up the charts with their single, Will the Wool Survive? Rolling Stone Magazine's critics poll named them best band of 1984, and their LP, How Will the Wolf Survive, is also climbing up the charts. Tom Petty has a new LP. It's called Southern Accents, and it features three tunes co-written by the Eurythmics' Dave Stewart. Video nightclubs seem to be taking the country by storm. We have Orrin Anderson at the Metro to report on how the craze has caught on in Boston. I'm Orrin Anderson for Boston's Beat. Tonight we'll be getting a behind-the-scenes look at the Metro one of Boston's largest nightclub complexes. We'll be talking to Joe Varange, the principal VJ at the club. Let's go inside. All right, we're speaking to Joe Varange now at the Metro. Uh, Joe is the principal video DJ or VJ. So what exactly do you do as a VJ? Well, you really have to orchestrate um, <clears throat> everything. You uh, have to work with the uh, special effects people, the laser operators, the light lighting people. Uh, you really have to work very, very close with the disc jockey. It's not just three people doing their own thing. It's a, a team. It sounds really tricky to program so many screens all at once in so many clubs. How do you manage that? Well, you really have to have three pairs of ears. Uh, you know, you're listening in uh, Metro, and you're listening in uh, the upstairs portion of Spit 13 Up and downstairs in Spit. How do you manage all the different kinds of equipment all at once? We have, uh, let's see, we've got four three-quarter inch decks, three half inch decks, and uh, a couple of camera sources. And um, you're basically uh, uh, switching all of those, choosing those uh, particular sources on a, just a real basic crash switcher. You're doing this for three clubs, three different pieces of music with three decks and different screens in different clubs all at the same time. Yes. That's... And then I collapsed the other <laughs> night. Have you ever had any major disasters with the equipment and or uh, human error, shall we say? <laughs> Plenty of times. <laughs> Plenty of times. Uh, it's live TV. DJ is playing a song. How do you get that part of the video lined up with that part of the music? Well, uh, <clears throat> disc jockey, uh, club DJs play 12 inch extended versions of. Uh, of uh, songs and uh, record companies release uh, a single version or an album version. They don't make 12-inch videos, I take it. Uh, some some record companies are starting to do it. Uh, they'll release two versions, but we end up taking the single version, re-editing it to the 12-inch record, so we have the uh, the, the long, elongated version. We're able to uh, you know not play catch up or, or stop the tape and wait for this extended instrumental passage to come in. Do, do you think the people in the club appreciate what you're doing up there, or is it just stuff they think it's all one big tape? Do you think they really get what you're doing up there? Well, they, uh, yeah, they, they, they look, they laugh, they congregate by the bars where the monitors are. That's usually a good sign. What, what do you think the future holds for video in the clubs? Good question. It's, um, I think it's going to level off. You know, in the next few years, I think the technology uh, will uh, will make it so that all, uh, many nightclub operations, even a, a system as, as large as ours, will not be able to uh, move up into the, the, the next sphere. Okay, thank you. Joe Varange, The Metro. I was hoping you might change 
I'm Warren Anderson for Boston's Beat. Thanks, Warren. Let's go to some local news. Till Tuesday, the 1983 WBC and Rock and Roll Rumble winners have released their first album on Epic. It's called Voices Carry. The video for the title track was filmed entirely in Boston, except for one scene at Carnegie Hall. Video's getting extensive play on V66 and MTV, and Till Tuesday will be opening for Hall and Oates on their summer tour. John Butcher has signed with Capitol Records and is in L.A. now with the Axes recording their new LP. John Butcher in an interview said that he feels lucky about the new Capitol contract more than bitter about the old Polydor contract. Local boys make good. New Man's video of their popular hit, Bad Boys, was picked out of 100 to win one of six slots on MTV's basement tapes. Now, band management says that a contract for New Man is likely without the MTV finals. New Man's four-song EP called, what else, New Man, will be due out soon. Okay, now we have a Boston video premiere to the song Work That Skirt by the B-52s. Let's check it out. That was bizarre. Now let's take a look at the top five local albums. In the first position is Till Tuesday with Voices Carry, followed up by Phil Collins, No Jacket Required, Mick Jagger and She's the Boss, and behind him is Eric Clapton, Behind the Sun, and Tina Turner is still holding the number five position as your private dancer. Here's this week's trivia question. 
What local rocker sang backup vocals on Neil Young's Everybody Knows This Is Nowhere album? If you don't know, we have the answer for you in a minute. But first, it's time for this week's band spotlight. Boston beat reporter Michelle Lancey Mutilasco in Boston to catch Body English live. Hi, this is Michelle Lancey at the Rat Skeller in Kenmore Square, more commonly referred to as the Rat by its patrons. We're going to go into this famous rock club's basement, which has seen such acts as the Velvet Underground, the Cars, and the Jay Giles Band. We're going to have a few words with the band Body English and to see what they do best, perform their own brand of music. Uh, it was sort of like process of elimination. Uh -huh. It's like the hardest part of starting a band is coming up with a name for a band. I mean, you know, it's like it's the worst thing that you have to deal with when you're starting a band. And uh, I think I was driving down Route 1 at the time. Since you're the only member of the band that's here with us right now, why don't you give us a little inside information about everyone else? Oh, okay. Well, uh, the other people in the band, my brother's name is Richard. We have the same last name. Oh, great. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, the bass player's name is Steve Skye, and the singer's name is Liz Barnett. And uh, Liz is our most recent addition. She's been working with us for about three months. And uh, she's doing some pretty interesting things. She's you know, sung with a couple of the cars. She's working on some solo, some solo stuff with uh, Greg Hawks, and uh, she was on a record called I Am Siam, which was out a few months ago, and um, basically been in about 900 bands before, and uh, we feel real good about this one. Do you guys have anything out on vinyl yet? We're constantly working on tapes. I'm also a recording engineer and producer, and I work with a lot of other groups in town um, in the studio, and uh, my brother does that also, and, uh, and so we... We're in the studio a lot. We're pretty active recording a lot of material, so we're sort of planning a major assault for the fall. You know, we want to. We have some record companies interested, and in, you know, so in the fall we're going to do some showcases and and try and get some labels real interested in that kind of thing. Um, all the dives, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, just the rat, um, paradise, and bun raddies, and the channel, and in our basement. of tapes out. FNX plays a bunch of our stuff. Um, I just gave a tape to Carter Allen last week and hopefully that's going to be in, in the air pretty soon. Okay. So keep your dial tuned in. Okay. This is Michelle Lancy in the basement of the Rat, surrounded by part of Boston's Beat. Thanks, Michelle. Body English is certainly a band to watch for. We got some local concert dates for you. At the Orpheum, George Thorogood, April 12th, and Julian Lennon, April 16th, at a sold-out show. At the Worcester Centrum, we've got you too. Book solid for three nights, April 16th, 18th, and 19th. Did you get the answer to today's trivia question? Answer is Robin Lane from Boston's own Robin Lane and the Chartbusters. That's all the time we have for now. I'm Steve Locke for Boston's Beat. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to leave you with another look at Body English. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you.